Hey guys, Wacky here. Recently I've been having a lot of discussions on Twitter with other law hunters including Richard Pilbeam, aka JSF, who I'm sure you've heard of. One of these discussions centred around the lecture building that floats in the nightmare, specifically which faction in Bloodborne ran the lecture building before it was pulled into the Dreamlands. Generally speaking, there's two points of view on this. The first is that the lecture building is run by the school of Mensis. The second is that it's a building within Bergenworth itself. So I'm going to give evidence for both points of view and you can decide which one you believe. After that I'll discuss what I think is actually happening in the lecture building, specifically why it's trapped in the nightmare and what that means. I'll start by discussing the evidence that suggests the lecture building is run by Mensis. Now, the first piece of evidence comes from the way that we access the lecture building. To get to the first floor, we have to get the tonsil stone from the Forbidden Woods, and then pay a visit to the amygdala in the church of Mensis. Now, if you're feeling confused right now, please understand that the church uh, we go to isn't officially named the church of Mensis. It simply stands in front of the unseen village, and the door at the back of the church allows you to access the village itself, and that's how I like to refer to it. Next we look at the tonsil stone. It's described as a latticed, deformed rock, possibly a meteorite. It's widely believed that the different layers of the dreamlands are stacked, so the suggestion that the stone is a meteorite implies that it fell out of the higher realms into Yarnum itself. Also, when we look closely at the stone, we'll see it resembles the head of an amygdala, now this is highly speculative, but I do think it might actually be the petrified head of a dead amygdala. And all of this points to Mensis. After all, we find lesser amygdalas all over Yahagul, and the greater amygdala bosses in the nightmare frontier. Which brings me on to my next point. The lecture building is connected directly to two other realms in the dreamlands, the nightmare of Mensis and the nightmare frontier. Both areas are thought to have been created by Mensis during their ritual to gain audience with Mergo, so it makes sense to assume that the lecture building was too. Furthermore, the second floor of the lecture building can only be accessed by touching Mikolash's mummified corpse. Now within the lecture building itself there's a lot of interesting clues. First of all, when you look around the building you'll find the bodies of a lot of church hunters. Now of course Mensis split from the church, but the healing church split from Bergenworth too. If this was Bergenworth, why are there so many church hunters there? There's even a church giant on the second floor. You don't find anything like that in Bergenworth. Now as we go deeper in, we find a note in the lecture theatre that reads, Master Willem was right. Evolution without courage will be the ruin of our race. The words Master Willem was right suggest to me that whoever wrote this note knew Willem or knew of him but is referring to him in the past tense. If this was a note written by a student in Bergenworth, is it not more likely that it would be written as Master Willem is right? Again, this suggests that the note was written after Willem's time by a group of people whose paths initially diverged, as the healing churches did, but then returned to his way of thinking. And that's important because it's heavily implied as being the cause of Mensa's split with the church. Now we also find our old friend Patches here in the spider form. The only other place you find him is in the Nightmare Frontier trying to trap you as usual. But more importantly, the only other place you find spider enemies is in the Nightmare of Mensis. Moving on to the students still in the lecture building. You notice that when you kill them they almost always drop quicksilver bullets. Which suggests that they were heavy users of the old blood. Which Willem forbade so again making it unlikely that they were Willem students from Bergenworth. Finally, we find the Ogre of Ebritas within a chest in one of the smaller rooms. Now, the Ogre of Ebritas is heavily connected to the choir, who discovered Ebritas, but it's much more plausible to believe that Mensis took it from the choir rather than Bergenworth. <laughs> Now I'm going to move on to discussing the evidence in favour of the lecture building being Bergenworth. The first and most important piece of evidence in favour of the building being from Bergenworth is the trophy you receive when you first arrive in the lecture building. 
The description reads, Gain entry into the Bergenworth Lecture Building, which is pretty solid evidence in that case. Staying on this track, if you read the Japanese text of the Lecture Theatre Key description, it also states that the Lecture Building is Bergenworth. Why does the Japanese text mention Bergenworth but not the English version? It's hard to say, but it could be a mistake in either translation, so it's hard to be sure which one should be treated as canon. Earlier I mentioned a law note found in the theatre which read, Master Willem was right, evolution without courage will be the ruin of our race. And I suggested it indicates that whoever wrote this note didn't know Master Willem, and hence would not be from Bergenworth. But to be fair, the note could be read differently. It could be that the writer was from Bergenworth, and they wrote the note after Willem transformed into his current catatonic state. Now, in the lecture theatre we find the student uniform, the uniform description states it's very similar to the one found in Bergenworth, which is true. It looks like pretty much the same design except without the cape. This does point to Bergenworth. However, when we get to the Nightmare of Menses, we meet Mikolash and Edgar, both of whom are wearing the student uniforms. So maybe the uniform is not unique to the Bergenworth scholars. So overall, there's far less evidence pointing to the building being Bergenworth. But it has to be said that the individual pieces of evidence are actually stronger especially the lecture theatre key and trophy descriptions. But if this place is Bergenworth, how did it get trapped in the nightmare? Well, ironically enough, I believe the answer lies in that 1. We find so many healing church items dotted around and 2 that we get to the second floor of the building by touching Mikolash's mummified corpse. Bear with me here. When we touch Mikolash's corpse, we touch his head first. It's the exact same way in which we touch Lawrence's skull in the Grand Cathedral after we defeat Amelia. And what happens when we touch Lawrence's skull? We see a flashback of his memories. So what if the lecture building we visit in the Nightmare is not Bergenworth itself, but Mikolash's memories of Bergenworth? Thinking about it in this way does explain why we find so many menses healing church people in the lecture building. It's quite believable to say that they were transported to the lecture building on the completion of the menses ritual, or they happen to find their way into the nightmare just like we do. This brings me to the students we find everywhere within the building. Why are they here, and who are they waiting for according to the lecture theatre key? Before I answer those questions, I want to take a slight detour and discuss the nature of the students themselves. When I first saw them, I felt that they were the only characters in Bloodborne that reminded me of traditional Japanese ghosts. The white skin, the dark eyes, the deep moaning sounds they make as they move. Then I started looking into Sh Shinto belief and started wondering if I could find any parallels. I've come to the conclusion that the students are an allusion to Yurei, a common type of Japanese ghost that take many forms but have one defining feature. They are all said to have died in the throes of intense emotional pain. And it's the memories of that pain that keeps them tied to the world of the living. That's not all though. If we do a physical comparison, we find some interesting overlaps. First of all, they both have pale white skin. Also, they appear to have no legs. Yura sometimes have faces that seem to be deformed and melting. They're sometimes depicted as having elongated necks. They can move on walls and ceilings. They move on all fours in almost animal-like fashion. There are a couple of points of difference though. These being that Yuri often have long black hair, while the students are bald, and also the eyes of the students are almost completely black, a feature not seen in Yuri. But I believe these details can be explained by a detail I initially missed. During a discussion on Twitter, the user Tenebrescent C pointed out that the students look as if they have overdosed on mercury to such an extent that, in the nightmare at least, their form has changed so they're basically pure mercury at this point. This is an excellent observation and explains why a. they almost always drop quicksilver bullets when they die, b. why their spit is able to hurt you, they're basically attacking you with quicksilver puke, and c. why they don't have any hair, it's caused by mercury poisoning. Mercury being another name for Quicksilver.
Now going back to the question of why the students are here and who they're waiting for. In order to understand this, we have to ask ourselves what the lecture building represents. It's said to be a drift in the nightmare, and is connected to both the nightmare frontier and the nightmare of Mensis. The umbilical cord tells us that the aim of Mensis was to have an audience with Mergo. So why are the students waiting here in the building? I think the key is in the word wait, as referenced by the lecture theatre key. As it states, the students appear to await the return of their professor. Now, there's a Catholic concept called limbo, specifically the limbo of the patriarchs, which in Catholic belief is a place for those that died in the friendship of God, but could not enter heaven until redemption by Jesus Christ made it possible. In fact, it's believed that Jesus did himself travel to limbo and told the inhabitants that they would one day be with him in paradise. So the students are waiting for their professor just as the inhabitants of limbo are waiting for their saviour to take them to paradise. So tying it back to Bloodborne, what if Mikolash, aka Jesus, went to heaven, aka the Nightmare of Mensis, while the students were in the lecture building, aka Limbo, for his return to lead them to paradise, aka Communion. It all ties nicely in my mind because Yurei are usually ghosts that have been in pain due to a hardship they experienced during death and it's quite easy to believe that the students were transported into the nightmare along with Mikolash and are now in pain as they wait for eternity for a madman who will never return. Finally, why was it that the Bergenworth lecture building was created by the Mensis ritual? It could be intentional or otherwise. If it was intentional, then Mikolash may have wanted to use it as a place to perform more experiments or learn Master Willem's secrets, but that seems unlikely. It's more likely that it was simply due to the strength of feeling Mikolash had for Bergenworth, which was likely an important time in his life, the place where he discovered the Eldritch truth. After all, the Great Ones are sympathetic in spirit. Okay guys, that's it for now. Uh, thanks for listening to the video as usual. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, and if you're new around here, please subscribe.